part two, we spoke of accumulation and how large operators build a position. In this video, we explore distribution where the smart money, the institutions build a position to capitalize on lower prices. This is known as shorting the market. And within distribution, there are five phases, that of A to E. And we explore these in detail. Within A, for example, we have BC, a buying climax that leads to an automatic reaction. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, hit our notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Please take a read here through the disclaimer and the copyright. Distribution, phase three of the Wyckoff cycle. Now, distribution is exactly the same as accumulation reversed. Our CEO, the smart money, offloads shares, banking profits from the campaign made in accumulation down below. And we'll start to build positioning by opening shorts. Opening a short position in the simplest term means you can profit whilst the market moves south. One expects lower prices, a decline, which of course we know to be the markdown phase, phase four. So let's mark these phases, phase A, phase B, phase C, phase D, into phase E. And phase A within distribution is the end of the prior trend, in this case, an uptrend, which was markup phase two. And it was a selling climax via accumulation. Here within distribution, we're looking for a buying climax. It has the same characteristics, a very wide spread and high volume. And the high volume is represented between the battle of buyers and sellers as the sellers have to halt the uptrend and begin to distribute as into open short positions to start the distribution campaign. And this is the initial turning point between buyers and sellers. Not forgetting PSY, which is preliminary supply, that indicates supply is beginning to appear within markup and spreads will widen to the downside along with increasing volume. So this here would be the buying climax. And then we have AR. This is an automatic reaction. And within accumulation, it's known as the automatic rally. So the automatic reaction should, but not always, produce a meaningful move to the downside. And of course, we'd like to see this be the best reaction since the uptrend has began. And then finally, over to here, which would be ST, the secondary test, which of course is testing demand in the highs via the buying climax high. And this is usually occur around the top 25% of the buying climax bar. And we want to see narrow spreads accompanied with low volume in this area, which shows indications of poor demand, a lack of buying force. Phase B here within distribution is the longest or largest phase. And this is where the majority of calls is built. Now, due to the nature of distribution, the CEO, the smart money wanting lower prices, position themselves by opening shorts. So within phase B, we want demand waves to decrease in size and volume than the supply waves. We want the selling pressure to increase because both of these actions are bearish. We have poor buying and good quality selling. For example, we want the up waves to decrease. So we could have spreads like this, then it goes like this, then it could go like this. The volume accompanied could be like this. So we can see that the up waves are decreasing in quality. Whereas we see that the down waves, we want the opposite. We want to see the selling to improve within phase B. That's kind of the transfer that we're looking to see. Within B over here, there will be a secondary test or an upthrust in this case. And an upthrust is the opposite of a spring. Price breaks through resistance made from the structure from our distribution schematic. It will reverse 
and close back within the confinements of the trading range. And of course, this action, this breakout here will induce a bull trap. We have traders who see the trend is up. We have a resistance. Price breaks on through and they expect higher prices. So as price returns back inside the trading range, these traders will be trapped. And of course, this action over here would also uh, get rid of weak hands who perhaps sold, who were in the correct position, and this would be a logical stop placement. It's a great way for the CO, the smart money, to add further inventory at a good price. It wrong foots the market. Many traders would be expecting continuation to the upside via this break. You get breakout traders, for example. Distribution within phase B can produce an upthrust, as in here, not just a secondary test. An upthrust needs to break through a resistance area. A secondary test could be if it halts here, then we come on down. And this is the same for accumulation. Within phase B, the market may print springs. And in the previous schematic of accumulation, we only had secondary tests. And it's important to understand that there will be different flavors of accumulation and distribution. It can unfold numerous ways within phase B. Sometimes with springs, sometimes no springs, some with six secondary tests, some with two secondary tests. So essentially, what we are looking for is a lack of supply in phase B via accumulation and a lack of demand in phase B via distribution. Phase C within distribution may break out above recent highs, as we've done here, or an upthrust. And this is called UTAD, upthrust after distribution. And a UTAD is more aggressive. It will have very high volume and wider spreads than a standard upthrust. It penetrates more into fresh highs. And this triggers breakout traders who expect the bull trend to continue. Intraday momentum traders will get involved. FOMO traders will get involved. The UTAD completely wrong foots the market to ultimately reverse and close back under resistance here. Now, due to the high volume, the UTAD will need testing. As the CEO, the smart money needs to be sure categorically there is no demand left in the market before we commence markdown. So UTAD would be the last place of capitulation within distribution. And they can effectively add a great deal of shorts to their campaign. Yet a caveat of phase C, or an alternative if you will, is if demand, the buying power, is weak, there may not be enough force to print an upthrust here. And literally, it will make lower highs. And it's the same with phase C, within accumulation, a spring. If the selling force is weak in accumulation, okay, support, there's not enough selling force to bring it back down to break through a support to reverse. The CO, the smart money, has done a good job of mopping up supply. And once again, this can make labeling phase C a little more difficult. Now onto phase D within distribution. Simple terms, we want to see sellers in control. We want to see the swings to the downside that are longer in duration to that of poor, weak rallies that consist of price action with narrow spreads and low volume. And these weak rally highs, like here, would be labeled as LPSY. LPSY. This is known as the last point of supply. Evidence of a strong move down will be labeled as a sign of weakness, especially if we break structural areas. And price will break support lows from the distributional range with high volume and wide spreads. We now see the commitment for sellers for lower prices. We're ready for markdown. And due to the nature of breaking support with high volume, the CEO may need to test this area for potential demand as they do not want any buying friction before markdown commences. And lastly, 
into phase E here within distribution. This is confirmation that sellers are indeed in control, i.e. continuation of the downtrend. And lower prices are achieved with little force, as in selling pressure. And phase E certainly favours taking place to the downside going forward into markdown as they have higher odds of success. On to a distribution case study, our first being a cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Phase A here, as we can see, is climactic in nature, the buying climax, note the high volume. The automatic reaction, as we can see, produces the best reaction we've seen since this uptrend has begun, preceded by a secondary test. Now this secondary test is very weak. It shows weak buying and very low volume. So we get good selling preceded by poor buying. This is a good start to the distributional schematic. Into phase B here, we see volatility in the beginning, unable to test deep into the buying climax. Price actually breaks into new lows. This is a, a secondary test, a minor sign of weakness occurring. And this action we would interpret as weakness. Then price does emerge or rally back above support within our distributional trading range. And we do indeed rally to the buying climax high. But note the volume decreasing dramatically on the low to the highs. Ergo, look at the volume over here in the beginning with this volatility. We do get a little bit of price action here, but we can see there the volume has reduced dramatically near the highs. The buyers are being absorbed. So from phase B, we move into phase C, and we see one last final push into the highs above the buying climax high. And what do we note here? Well, we push on up, yet we reverse back inside with good wide spread and a good surge in volume. Ergo, this is an up thrust after distribution. Note the volume here. There has been activity as we've been trying to break through here on this action. There have been many traders caught off guard. It would have triggered the bull trap, etc. The breakout traders who think the uptrend will continue. Now they're trapped as price breaks back under resistance. This is the final mop buying absorption before phase D. So within phase D, we want to see down waves increase in duration with minimal rallies. We get a big, nice duration here to the downside, minimal rally. Good duration to the downside, minimal rally. We get a beautiful move from this LPSY, producing our sign of weakness. And then we get many LPSYs all along here. There's an inability to test resistance here. These are all last points of supply. There is an inability to push on higher, to, to return back inside the distributional trading range. That's either telling us buys are exhausted or there's selling pressure. Break lower into a major sign of weakness. And note the high volume. Note the high volume over here. This volume needs to be tested. Don't forget, before markdown, the CEO wants to be categorically sure there are no willing active buyers. Any signs of potential buyers must be absorbed. Needs to be checked. That's why a price comes back into this area. So it mops up any residual demand that may exist before, boom, we break down into phase E over here with good volume, good wide spreads, ease of movement to the downside. There's a supply imbalance, as in we gap down, ease of movement to the downside. We haven't discussed major signs of weakness or major signs of strength. As I said, we are keeping the basics to an absolute minimum. There is a lot of information shared, especially if you're coming with fresh eyes. 
which I'm sure it could be overwhelming. So let's go to our last chart for the day, General Electric. And this illustrates a distribution schematic. Phase A, and we have something different, a buying climax area. Momentum pushed price into this area. Now, clearly, there is a lot of selling in this area, and this is climactic in nature. And the automatic rally here itself is fairly extreme produces a large down wave although we don't have the full chart to display it is a clear change of character it's surely the largest down wave since the uptrend began and then the second we test the up thrust is deep right here into the buying climax area and the advance here i would say is pretty strong in price action terms however Note the volume. The volume here is incredibly low, very low. Phase B here, we have a climactic run into the highs that ultimately fails and price trades back under resistance. Of course, this being resistance from our distributional trading range. And now we can label this an upthrust. Then note what happens. Price stalls here. It trades sideways. We're unable to break back through resistance after we have just seen sellers emerge via the up thrust. Note the volume associated with this sideways action. It is the lowest volume, consecutive volume, I should say, on the chart with very poor price action. This we interpret as no demand. There is no buying force. Pair this with active sellers. Now we are beginning to build a picture of weakness. Then boom, we fall with increasing volume. This is textbook. Now don't forget, the purpose of phase B is to distribute shares from the CO, realize profits and open shorts to build a short position. Think of all the traders that would be long here and now trapped now this is superb price action we're breaking out an uber strength we're going to the moon breakout traders fomo traders they're all getting in on this action it's a fairly large break then all of a sudden boom we fall we come crashing down and we're back under resistance where we see poor buying this is weak hands in to strong hands beautiful for the CEO, the smart money. And then post break here, we actually see a major sign of weakness. Price comes back to resistance. There's an attempt to up thrust that fails. Ergo, we can label this LPSY, last point of supply. There is enough buying force to take us back up to these highs, to test back up here from the up thrust high and essentially this action here is a test the up thrust and the volume is low it's negative for the buyers activity is low there is no commitment from the buyers then boom price returns back inside the trading range we gap down volume increases we see a supply imbalance and then we have a little test over here or very low volume. Before we move into phase D, we have a trading range here that forms a last point of supply that started from this reaction here. So there's no ability to rally after a good wave down. Then we receive another good wave down. We come to support, unable to break, we push on up, we come back and we have another last point of supply. And this breakdown here would be a major sign of weakness. Phase D is all about confirmation of supply and disconfirmation of demand. Now the down waves here are very large in comparison to the up waves. Then we get one last LPSY over here before another break into lows, which is our sign of weakness, 
we get our rally to ice, which is the opposite of the backing up action, which is of the last test before gap down into phase E, which of course is a supply imbalance and we're ready for lower prices. Let's summarize distribution as succinctly as possible. Phase A is all about stopping the previous trend, which of course is up. Then phase B is building a cause. It's mopping up demand. Phase C is testing action. We're doubling down on insurance that there is no further buying participants. We want to see poor buying. Phase D is where we see supply overcomes demand. And this is represented with good down waves, better than the up waves. Phase E, we break out into trend. We're ready for markdown. And here, PSY is preliminary supply. It's a first attempt to halt the uptrend and we see volume and spreads increase. BC, buying climax, it stops the uptrend. The automatic reaction is a bearish reaction, often the largest reaction since the uptrend began. The secondary test, it tests demand via the climax high. Up thrust, and this is test resistance boundary, it turns back to the range, it's a temporary break. A UTAD is up thrust after distribution. And this is test resistance boundaries within our distributional schematic for demand. Okay, the climax high. Then we get to test the UTAD. We want to see a lack of buying. Then we have LPSY, which is the last point of supply. We have bullish rallies that are unable to test the resistance boundary and create lower highs. So trading range. We come down. We come down to support, we come back to resistance, we come down, we rally. We are unable to test resistance here. This will be LPSY. We bounce off, we come down again. This will be LPSY. We're unable to test the resistance boundary from our distributional schematic. Sign of weakness, price declines with decent spreads, volume and duration with minimal rallies. Finally, rally to ice was the last rally before markdown. Oh, before we go, a pure Wyckoffian technician would be using this slanting trend channel for the structure, the distributional structure. And we can see that price is contained very, very well. It's well respected. Yet another Wyckoffian would use the strict horizontal support and resistance for the macro structure. And this is kind of some of the ambiguity that I was speaking of. So on to some final words. As I've stated throughout this introduction to Wyckoff, it is basic, a mere introduction to some concepts and principles. There are many nuances and advanced learnings within the accumulation and distribution schematics in fact, within every phase, there are further schematics such as reaccumulation and redistribution, additional labeling, major signs of weakness, major signs of weakness or minor signs or major signs of strength, major changes of behavior, shakeouts, terminal shakeouts, UTADs, macro framework of the accumulation or distributional structure. You know, one can spend years perfecting the art of this Wachofian style in trading. For example, so if we're coming down, this is our selling climax, then we get a very large automatic rally. So we retrace very, very deep. Then we get a very shallow secondary test that holds all along the rest of the distribution schematic through phase B, through phase C, through, the, through phase D and up into E. This is, we would interpret this as strength because there's not enough selling force now to push our secondary test back down to the selling climax low. And or it's either a lack of selling or buyers are just holding price up. And you'll be able to see this from the price action. There's extremely high volume holding this on these down bars at a support level. It's buyers coming in. If, there's, if we're looking at down waves and there's just very, very, very low volume, we know it's a lack of supply. However, we at AcriTrade do not trade in this manner. We do not use the Wyckoffian schematics 
Now, from a personal standpoint, the process of identifying phases and labeling correctly can be tiresome. In addition, some of phase B and phase C labeling is after the fact. It's not real time. There are some schematics that require further confirmation, ergo it's lagging. This I identify as ambiguity. And ambiguity has no place in trading. That's not to say there is no value with this Wyckoffian understanding or trading in this manner. It's merely a matter of preference. And I for one think it is important that I have shared this contrarian Wyckoffian process in its most basic format to give you this foundational understanding. Now in the next video, I'm going to share with you another branch of Wyckoff called tape reading. And essentially, this is where we use the three Wyckoffian laws, market structure, price action, and logic to extract the supply demand imbalance by using the lost language of bar, bar, bar analysis. And this is the trading we undertake, specialize and teach at Acme Trades. And I'm extremely excited to share my knowledge and begin your journey into a modern interpretation of Wyckoff. To help cement the newfound knowledge, we have constructed a free interactive workbook full of the charts found within the course. Go to our website www.acmetrades.com and explore this resource. That's all folks. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you found it informative and extracted value. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, hit our notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. We value your feedback and suggestions, so please leave a comment below and let us know a topic you would like us to cover in future videos.